Welcome to day two of this week's devotions. We're following up Sunday's resurrection teaching. Uh, if you missed the message, click the link below. Open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 15. Yesterday, I challenged you to consider reading or listening to it, the entire chapter, every day this week, five times. I promise you, if you are focused as you listen or read, you will see the flow of the chapter, you'll remember many of the key verses and truths, and you will gain a better understanding of the reality of Christ's resurrection and the reality of our resurrection. So pause now and read or listen to the chapter, and then we'll look at that second section. Well, the religious sect of the Sadducees taught that God did not do miracles, which is why they rejected Jesus' three-year ministry that was filled with miracles, and that there was no possibility that anyone could be resurrected from the dead to return to life on earth which is why they rejected the gospel message, because it included Christ's resurrection. In verses 12 through 19, Paul shows us what it will be if we allow ourselves to be deceived by false teachers into doubting or denying the resurrection. Verse 13, if there's no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. So Jesus is not alive. Christianity is just like every other religion. The distinctive of his resurrection and defeat of death is removed. Verse 14, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is a useless, a devoid of truth, a lie. Uh, so what we preach is not true if Jesus remained in the grave. Verse 14, and so is your faith, useless, ineffective, it doesn't work. Logically, putting your faith in a dead person won't gain you, gain you anything. Verse 15, more than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, meaning all those who saw Jesus alive are lying about what they saw and what God did, because dead people don't return and can't return to this life. Verse 17, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. You're still guilty before God. So back to the old covenant and the sacrificial system at the temple, because that's the only way you'll find forgiveness. Romans 4.25 reveals, Jesus was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. If Jesus isn't alive, he can't justify us. That is, declare us righteous in God's sight, so our status is still guilty. Verse 18, and those who have died and are lost. Uh, we say they're in heaven because of Jesus, but they aren't. Because they put their faith in the wrong person, they are dead. And that's the way it is if Jesus was not raised. Now tomorrow we'll examine the flip side of those statements. For today, the lesson should be clear the resurrection is significant and is to be believed. Do you believe? And if you do, here's an action point. You ought to consider making it a discussion point in your spiritual conversations with people. For example, ask someone, what do you believe about the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Did he rise from the dead? And if he did, what did that prove? Do you believe you can live after you die? Those are some great discussion points. Perhaps you might add them to your evangelistic conversations. For today, let's remember that we serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. We know that he's living whatever men may say. Let's pray to him now. Lord, thank you that you are the resurrection and the life that you live forevermore, and because of you and what you did for us on the cross in your death and resurrection, we too will live forevermore with you. Thank you. Praise you. And now, add your personal prayers. God bless you.